Hey everyone, Daniela here with Addo Aesthetics, and today we're setting the record straight when it comes to growth factors. Now, there's a lot of information and a lot of confusion around this skincare ingredient, which is why I asked Dr. Mehta to join us to chat all about the science behind growth factors and also answer the questions that you guys submitted in the Estheticians Connect Facebook group. Now, Dr. Mehta is the VP of Research and Development for Allergan Medical Dermatology and Skin Medica, which is a well-known, well-respected global skincare brand that uses growth factors in their products. So, Dr. Mehta, thank you so much for being here and chatting with us. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Of course. So, I've got my list of questions here submitted from the group to make sure that I don't miss anything. And the first question is, can we just start with defining what a growth factor is and clarifying the difference between growth factors and stem cells? Sure. So, so growth factors are natural substances that are made by skin cells. Actually, they're made by all the cells in the body, especially skin cells. We are talking about skin care. Uh, the role is to maintain healthy skin. Uh, they're responsible for stimulating repair of damaged skin. Are making components and provide that provide firmness and elasticity to the skin and really maintain skin's protective function. So that's really our growth factors. And they're different, they're not growth hormone. That, that's one confusion that happens many times. Uh, growth factors are not growth hormone. They're, they're designed for skin to help itself heal. Uh, stem cells, uh, uh, in case of skin care, we're talking about adult stem cells. And, and what, when we uh, Talk about adult stem cells, their function is to maintain and repair the tissue in which they are found by creating new cells in the tissue. Uh, now, when you hear about stem cells in skin care, you're talking about the stem cells themselves. It's actually either an extract of the stem cells that's in the product or the medium in which stem cells grow, that uh, called stem cell condition medium. Uh, that's what is, is used in, in skin care in, in many cases. Now, uh, uh, you can get stem cells from, from multiple sources. It, it could either be human cells that are derived from different tissues in the human, or it could be plant stem cells that are derived from plants uh, and then extracted. Uh, there are also some other types of stem cells that have different functions. But in general, uh, 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 stem cells obtained from plant sources are really rich in antioxidants, and that's how they work. Uh, uh, most human derived stem cells are responsible for producing growth factors. So, so you are essentially talking about stem cells that make growth factors that you're putting in the plant. Perfect. So both human growth factors and plant stem cells are used in skin care. Would you say that there's one that's more effective than the other? So, so in terms of uh, the, the types of our sources of growth factors, that, 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 that's what we call them. There are, there are many sources of growth factors. Uh, in general, uh, growth factors derived from human tissue, uh, whether it's skin or, uh, or fat cells or bone marrow cells, uh, are really human growth factors. Mm -hmm. uh, plants don't produce growth factors. Uh, what plants have is really strong antioxidants, and that, that, that's how they work, by providing protection function. Uh, they, they don't have anything that would stimulate uh, uh, the same types of systems that, that human growth factors do. Now, in terms of... Uh, uh, human sources of growth factors, again, uh, you can obtain them from fibroblast, which is really the skin cells that make growth factors, or you can obtain them from fat cells, typically taken from, uh, from liposuction. Um, or there are some sources like bone marrow, the rich in stem cells. Uh, as I mentioned before, the function of the stem cells uh, is to, or, or all the cells, the growth factors, although they can all produce growth factors, the growth factors they make, their function is to help repair and rebuild the tissue in which they are found. So naturally, growth factors derived from skin cells, their main function is to help the skin maintain itself. And so uh, the sources of growth factors that are fibroblast derived are the best for skin care use. And we have some data to show that when, when we compare either fibroblast derived with uh, uh, fat cell derived or uh, uh, bone marrow derived growth factors. The fibroblast derived growth factors work best in in, uh, in in inducing skin to repair itself. Okay, so are there any types of any skin types or any type skin conditions that you wouldn't recommend using growth factors on? Uh, so uh, there are really no known contraindications for using topical growth factors based on skin type. Mm -hmm. uh, however, growth factors uh, and for that matter any 
any cosmetic or skin care products should not be used on open wound or any medical co conditions that compromise uh, barriers such as eczema or, or psoriasis or anything like that or anything that has altered cellular proliferation like a known skin cancer. Uh, the products uh, help most with photo damaged skin. So photo aging is really the indication for most growth factor based product. Uh, and uh, we also know that uh, the more severe the photo damage, the more effect the products have typically from the clinical studies that we have done. Would you consider acne an open wound on the skin? Uh, acne is typically not considered an open wound because al although it is it is open, there is still an intact uh, uh, a barrier that goes underneath the, the follicle, uh, or and uh, it, 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 it's not that easy to get things into the into the pores that, and and then have it deliver inside the skin. So no, acne would not be considered an open wound. Okay, and you know one of the concerns that I hear a lot are people that are expressing concern is you know, using growth factors on patients who have had cancer in the past. And so has this been studied? And if so, what are the findings? So, so first of all, uh, using any active product, not just growth factors, any active products mm -hmm. that, that, that can change, uh, uh, that, that make changes to the skin would not be some, it would be very complicated to uh, really create guidelines into how can we use this in cancer patients or not. In general, we do not recommend using our products on patients with uh, either with cancer or somebody who has had cancer before. And that same thing applies to other skin conditions. Uh, any 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 disease condition should we should not use growth factor based product. Uh, uh, with respect to specifically with growth factors, the concerns people have stem from a few studies either in cell culture or in animal models where extremely high doses of single growth factor, whether it's PDGF or VEGF. Uh, they have been implicated in carcinogenic transformation of the cells or tissue that are studied in vitro. Uh, uh, however, there are uh, uh, several reasons that we believe topically applied growth factors are, are safe for most other patients. Um, and then that's because, uh, uh, as you might know, growth factors are large molecules. They are extremely large. They do not penetrate skin very well. And so when you apply growth factors topically, the fraction that goes to the skin is extremely small and, and we believe it's anywhere from hundreds of thousands to millions of fold lower concentration than what's studied artificially in vitro, uh, where the concerns of, of skin cancer uh, stem from. Uh, second is that uh, uh, growth factors never work by themselves singly. So any growth factor that you have, whether it's TGF, beta or PDGF or VEGF, uh, uh, they have their primary function, but uh, in, in real physiology, they work together with all the other growth factors. So, so, so for example, if, if, if you have one growth factor that is taking over the biology of the skin, other growth factors come in and, and, and kind of harmonize the biological activity. So, so when you have a mixture of growth factors that you are giving topically, like TNS or any other growth factor product derived from uh, nat naturally derived growth factor products, you have physiologically balanced mixture of growth factors. So no single growth factors uh, can take over the, the physiology. Which is what what the, the some of the preclinical studies find is that a single growth factor can cause carcinogenic transformation, mm -hmm. whereas a physiologically balanced medium, uh, it, it's not very likely to do anything like that. And third, for last over ten plus years, we have been actively monitoring the adverse events from TNF line of products, and uh, what we know so far is that the adverse event reports we receive, uh, they're about zero point zero two percent of products sold, so extremely low rate of adverse events, and all of those are and classify them basically into either skin rashes or some breakouts. Uh, mm -hmm. There's really no, no, nothing more serious than that has been reported over the past 10 to 12 years that we have been actively monitoring this. So, so we believe uh, topically used growth factors uh, as, as used as directed are, are very safe for most people. Okay, and so this has been a lot of great information, but if people, if aesthetic experts or estheticians or spa owners or physicians want to research more about growth factors, where do you recommend that they go to find that information and, and gather it for themselves? So, so uh, uh, in terms of growth factors for topical use, we just published a chapter, I co-authored a chapter with late Dr. Fitzpatrick on cellular growth factors. Uh, it's published in uh, Wiley Blackwell, a book uh, edited by Dr. Zoe Drelos, Cosmetic Dermatology Production Procedures. Uh, and it, it gives us overview of published data on current products. Uh, there's also a recent uh, review published in uh, 2014, the journal Facial Plastic Surgery. 
by Dr. Sabrina Fabi and Hema Sundaram. And it provides a good overview of growth factors, not just topically, but also by superficial injection. Mm -hmm. And actually, there are a lot of articles. If you just go to Google Scholar and look for growth factors as cosmeceuticals, you find almost all the articles that, that are published on topical use of growth factors. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Mehta. It's been a, a great wealth of information that I'm sure the, the esthetician community will be very grateful for. So I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for allowing me to go over these interesting details about growth factors with your audience.